What is going on guys? We just got done going through this bus with Joe. Joe, one of the craftsmen responsible for building this 07 Prevo Parliament. And I think I've learned more this morning hanging out with you about Prevo and Parliament than I have in any video I've ever filmed. This is a video you guys are gonna wanna watch. JoJo is gonna go in depth in this coach, showing all of the features. And this is the cleanest Prevo trade-in that I've ever seen come in on trade here at the motor coach store or any dealership for that matter. Jojo, great to hang out with you. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. What's a little bit of your background and, and what's going on here? I spent uh, 21 years with this company here. I have a background in electronics, woodworking, and I'm also a mechanic and have been in this field for a long time. Coming out of the service, 92 started with Conley RV Center. We dealt with Coachman and, and Fort Travels. Next thing I know, I'm getting a phone call and going to work for Parliament Motor Coach. I worked from Parliament from 2004 all the way till basically I came to work for Brad's. I learned from some of the best remodelers as far as RV remodeling in the business. So I was brought on board um, as an apprentice at first and then let go with 57 here. I did that one, the flooring, a lot of the wood panels on the side, the ceiling panels, the wiring, electronics, all myself. Also, we were on the show team, so I was able to take a finished, completed product and actually show it. We would all hold technical seminars on how to operate, maintain your aqua hot, your generator, kind of where I met Brad Twait. When my turn came to come down and see Brad, it was an easy pick. He knew who I was. He called me. This is just clicking for us. My knowledge and what I've done, we can bring what we are doing here and where we want to go forward at the motor coach store. I think this is going to be a really, really good thing. Any of you that monitor the different Prevo forums and different Prevo Facebook groups, a lot of you know Jojo, yeah. one of the most respected Prevo technicians in the industry. So Jojo, really honored to hang out with you today. Absolutely. And let's go deep in this coach. I think we have a lot to learn. This one was built right there in Clearwater. We built four at a time back then. And this one was built for a gentleman, went to Missouri. And then from there, I guess it changed a few owners, you know, since then. With that being said, we're now looking at a, some upgrades. There's a newer dishwasher in there. We've got newer Dometic air conditioners on the roof that have been installed. They've put new washer and dryers in it from the Splendies. You've got a brand new pair of uh, GEs in there. The most of it kind of stayed the same. I've talked about it in the past. H3 has the biggest bays in the industry. Mm -hmm. And then this being a double slide coach, you have more room under your awnings when those go out. It is pretty warm out here. Do you think we could put these awnings out? All right, so you had no trouble finding the awning controls, but now is there another remote for these awnings as there well? Is. So while these are going uh, out right now, let's take a look at these bays. So this bay here, they opted for two sliders here. These are like a thousand pounds each and they will come the full complement out. And I like that they're manual, mm -hmm. uh, one less button to push, one less battery that you're gonna have to replace. And she'll open from both sides. Like I said, he was an entertainer. These are two individuals. Make yeah. your offloading, onloading of storage a lot easier. Your table out here, you just grab them on the slots. Boom. And then you're you're ready to go here. Set up for a little buffet there. Yeah, and then you grab your super slider here. This is a design that I came up with. I was tasked with by my service manager, Dan Romero, how we're gonna do this without having the monotony of putting two inserts in. So we use dual stainless steel pianos here. So it just simply folds up and also provides a backsplash stop when you're fully in rest position. This will be your, your cooking and your food prep area. Of course, you have your cooler here. When you fold that back out, you're basically giving yourself more countertop space for preparing meals. Absolutely. So right there is a space that could be utilized for prep. I just want to point out the little details, like we're seeing the dovetail construction here on these drawers. What's the level of build quality on this bus compared to other Prevo conversions out there? We research a lot of our materials for the lightest and strongest material. We also have all the planers, all the machines that make those dovetails, CNC routers, everything is auto catted. We had a design team that went through. We also fully fitted everything 
before it was installed so we knew first off whether the plan was going to work everything was up to spec on the on the CAD drawing before it was put in the coach afterwards of course some minor tweaking where a lot of the manufacturers don't do that they take their program they take their list they cut and stamp out their materials send it to another team that assembles it and throws it in we actually revisit it several times before we know it's the right fit is what kind of set us apart back then fast forwarding now we can really see that quality that interior is probably held up the best of any oh, yeah. 07 Prevo interior I've seen. Is that interior all original or yeah. that was yeah. not remodeled? I'm, no. I can't <laughs> wait to show you guys inside here. Yep, added storage. These sit on these latches, they lock up and then you click and lock down. Oh yeah. Our cooler, so it's a, a Dometic and this is a could be a freezer and or a refrigerator. This guy's still the original that's in here. Certainly what we see now today, it's got the split and you can control each zones. So this is where you're going to store all of your prep for your outdoor cooking or tailgating whichever you may use the bus for beautiful woodwork mm -hmm. that's really held up well in these bays that's all original from Parliament yes. yeah the first design we actually did this all in mirror but it was just way way too much so we toned it down our uh, AutoCAD guy actually came up with that one and uh, we ended up using the wood on the outside to tone to break it and it just looks stunning really nice design from the base to the interior mm -hmm. and then uh, is this the original Samsung TV no this was not a Original. The original wooden one would have been a, a monitor that fit inside. So that looks like the original Clarion stereo there. That was That's original. very high end back in the day. And then some more drawer space. We've got storage here for remotes, basically, is where you would store a lot of your whatnots. But this is also our electronics bay, very comparable to the Newell, where they have theirs in the third bay. So we put our electronics in here, and this is going to house all of your, your spider control systems. Any button that's in the coach that you touch it actually has a function to it is controlled through this spider panel here aqua hot control panel has been put up there you've got shade boards this big unit here controls the octa 12 volt for your uh, aqua hot but we left the access for the fuel tank which is something Parliament prided themselves on is technical accessibility so it's tech friendly you don't have to pull the world apart to get to your fuel tank sending unit it's right there same with your TV controls everything pops pops out. You have storage back here, but this is my point to the Parliament design was the accessibility as a technician to get at critical components without taking the room apart to repair something. So that was a really, really good design, well vented. This is definitely the second generation of TV that went in here. Smart TVs were hard to come by in 07. Yeah, and then diesel fuel tank. Do you know what the size of the 210, two, 210 gallon diesel fuel tank? Mm -hmm. And then coming to this next space, the wood face and then that polished stainless look, a little outside water faucet. Paper towel dispenser here, this is for hand soap. Most of these components here break away. Again, if you had a problem with anything, accessibility on a Parliament is very, very easy. And when you pop that in, everything just looks so flush and mm -hmm. so clean. I would never imagine that panel would pop off so mm -hmm. easily. And then this is the big boy aqua hot here, it looks like. Yep, you've got another water fill on this side and another tank dump on this side, as well as washing off whatever you're using during that procedure. Aqua hot is here, power if you needed it. And we also left cutouts in the bays that you can unscrew and run your power cord or your hose up through there so your bay isn't staying open during your camping trip. Now you showed me something in the engine that I've never seen before. What's going on back here? In this one, we're running a 4D AGMs. So we've got batteries here. We've got batteries in the next compartment as well. But what we've done on this particular bus we have four air conditioners on the roof. We have two Zantrek 4,000 watt inverters on this thing, so we've got plenty of power. What about rolling down the road? We don't want to run a generator to invert all four of our airs, so what we did was we took the 270 amp alternator off of it. Instead of the 270 oil-cooled alternator you'd normally see here, and a 24 and a 12 alternator there, we put a monster 500 amp air-cooled alternator here which has significant power to power up your air conditioners when you're rolling down the bus inverted. So there's no need to start the generator on this guy. You can run with your complement or what you need on the roof and have no problem charging your, your bank of batteries with that guy right there. Still tech friendly, you know, your, your coolant filters. All of your belts here are in a traditional Prevo quick fix fashion. And what I mean by that, 
is you turn this air off and you can hear the air depleting. If you had to change one of these belts on the highway, you can easily just take it right off like that and change that. This is what you're going to see the most of on the highway as well as this. And mostly due to the fact that this airbag needs to air up before you go into high idle on a Prevost. That way you don't fling this or even damage this, uh, this tri-belt. But it is a lot easier on the highway just to simply tension and untension your belt by doing just that. Very cool. We also have the traditional Prevo start. Voila. We use it when we do oil changes to build oil pressure and just general testing. You can also put this in off position, shut the door, and nobody's going to be able to figure out how to start your motor home. So that's standard Prevo on an H3. But other than that, there's your Series 60. 500 horses. You see how this exhaust here around our bumper kind of rounding and contouring around the side. So all of the stainless steel, all of the metal work the, uh, was all stamped and done at Parliament Coach. We had our own metal shop and this was all manufactured from us. As well as most of the metal trim, all of this of course was, was Prevo, but a lot of what you see inside the coach, metal wise, we had our own metal fabrication center as well as a, a full wood shop. Man, that's a good looking plumbing bay there mm -hmm. with that wood grain finish. Compared to other converters at the time, well, how did Parliament rank compared to the Liberties and the Marathons back in the day? It's hard to compete with, you know, some of the older guys that have been out there doing it for a long time. So we, along with others like Angola Coach, we got in there, we made a good product, we made it, we did one thing and did it right. And we pride ourselves on our layout, our cabinetry, and our accessibility, which was what set us apart from from a lot of the major converters, but ours were geared more towards a technical because a lot of the technicians that we had took part in the build, so we had a say. In doing so, we pride ourselves, same thing, the accessibility to get to tops of your water bay, you know, anything like that. It was all stamped and laid out nicely. Big Headhunter Mach 5 oh, water yes, pump. Sir. It's got a single fresh water tank mm -hmm. and then a single black gray holding waste tank. With a gray water bypass, which is what that guy is. Yeah, and I'd, I would bet that that's between 143 and 180 gallons, depending least, on yeah. how deep across that bay it goes. Mm -hmm. When that build sheet does come out, this coach is going to go through a PDI process, detail process, and once that all gets gathered, you can find that on the motorcoachstore.com. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to give you guys a sneak preview with the man himself. Yep. This bay here is our Zantrak 4000 watt machines. Uh, I'm sure plenty of you out there that are full timers or RVers certainly recognize those old power houses but they sure do hold up they're just a workhorse of your rv so this guy here will tool handle one tool handle the other with that 500 amp and the complement of uh, agm batteries you're good to go going down the highway and keeping nice and cool so this is where we put our inverter this is where we put our surge guard which is built in on this model so this way this isn't getting stolen from your power plug at an rv resort or left behind we build it in right here main breaker connection here for your short power we also have an emergency transfer switch over here so I can take this from invert to shore or off to completely kill the coach for storage this is a gen 2 Prevo slide room system this is your heavy-duty slide room motor which is easily accessible here and you can actually bring your slide rooms in manually if God forbid you ever had to. So we kept it really clean knowing you may have to get at these functions here and you'll also see that we have, uh, have it vented in case of a overheating on the inverters. You can ask anybody going down the highway, air starts to coppitate underneath the bus and the fans are ineffective. We've got an a additional thermostat there to kick fans on to aid in the cooling of that bay. Eclipse 2, that is up along your ceiling line in some parts of the bus like the light up stairway is all fiber optic instead of LED. Fiber optic was a big thing in 07 so that unit is there easily accessible. You can open that up change the bulb out and such like that. As far as our protection you'll notice there's bus bar fuses. We pride ourselves on over protecting our system and in the other bay I showed you on the other side you'll see a whole bank of them on the ceiling and it used to be a practice of ours to go through every annual service we go through and manually tighten every one of those bus bars 
every year because they do vibrate loose and it's something we do here at the motor coach store as well yeah i'm noticing a buddy plug, the buddy down plug there, there for stackable then, trailers air in yeah what's that air in for um if the bus runs out of air you can manually lift it you can manually air the bus up for pocket doors and such like that without starting the bus what we were discussing earlier is accessibility and the way we did that on the parliaments here's a good example so here is where we put the shore cord and your water reel here so if this should go wonky on you how do you adjust the retrieve reel or the electronics well on the parliament the panels simply okay. just break away velcro line both ways now you can get to your reel for your glendenning and above it the electronic pack also for the glendenning you don't have to pull a compartment apart to get to that and all of these are simply panel off it's right there we kind of left everything in one these tubes you see coming down that's our drain system so like some of the uh, other models we run all four of our roof airs they come down a central drain to a kazoo on the bottom so you don't get that down the side of your motorhome now it's getting ready to rain out here now one thing i just noticed is we've got awnings here on this mm -hmm. side so this coach has like the bat wing awnings on both sides yes it has two full awnings on the entertainer side and then you have basically what these are they're toppers for the slide room so they don't come the full complement out but it does shade the slide room and keep a lot of the debris off of it and that's pretty much a standard on all the parliaments i know uh, marathon does it as far as liberty they'll put full slides we offered full this one we wanted to do the topper slides at the customer's request yeah and i have to point out how good of condition the fabric is in it's like a tan colored fabric that matches the bus in excellent condition on both sides. Mm -hmm. Every square inch of this coach is well taken care of. It's a very, very insulated bay. So this is your generator here. Behind this here, we have the controls for the generator up here. So there's manual controls, as well as an exhaust vent in the very back. With that being said, we'll go right into the generator bay. So you can hear how much louder that gets, but let's close that up. It's a lot quieter, so you've got sound deadening material. What all's going on in that generator bay? So we did use a fabric sound deadening the material versus that plastic. So that's actually, uh, that's wired in to the base. What we did is we it was all fully stitched. I mean, it's put up against the back. It's cleated, and then there is a circle that goes there, which you can't see. Wire is wound, and then it goes across zigzag, so it basically holds it in place. The generator there is on airbag for vibration dampening. Yeah, and I just have to point out how well the wood has held up. This is an 07, 15-year-old bus. The wood is in excellent condition. The original laminate that we wow. did from, uh, from Go, yeah. Again, just yeah. every yep. square inch of this bus is finished out. I'm really impressed. Yep, this one, they basically utilized as many storage and cabinet areas as you can this guy it's got the dividers in it for like a toolbox or what would this be used for kind of a craft drawer which is the way it was designed for crafts what kind or what they did i'm not sure but that's a craft drawer this wood grain just how well you know these drawers again the dovetail mm -hmm. construction and in the inside of those drawers extremely and clean you see the way they followed the grain down oh yeah look at that wow you know we try to follow the grain down on everything so it's one cut and then it's routed for that application so everything is just like one slab of granite if you will hide away latches so they're not sticking out and then a little spot down here to maybe put a lawn chair and there is battle a little wounds. battle yeah. wound in the wood grain but if that's the biggest blemish we're seeing we're doing really good we filmed this one earlier from the other side we've got half slide trays there and of course your top one which pulls out that way where we took our table from and again those slide trays there will handle every bit of a you know 900 pound rating so this is your forward electronics bay this is going to handle a lot of your uh, instrumentation dash some of the fuses here relays and such which control a lot of your dash and, and cockpit area this filtration system here is going to filter out uh, water separation from your air systems and the reason you're seeing this drop can here is because when this was designed it had a June air compressor in it instead of the full air oil list that's in it now so they would trap the june air in this little 
container rather than filtering it through all of your Norgren valves and anybody that's owned a Prevo knows about oil in the Norgren valves. This setup for windshield washing. Oh, nice. So this goes directly into draws from here so you can spray your windows and squeegee them off. And we've added a storage. This is basically where Prevo would put their spare tire. Yeah, and then you've got a manual tray right here for a spare tire mm -hmm. uh, with the air compressor inside of it. And that is powered. You have a, a power outlet in there as well. So this is where they would normally have put their spare tire on a Fleet H3. These exterior bays are impressive, but the interior is even more impressive. This is the nicest Prevo interior I've ever seen come in on trade here at the motor coach store so you want to uh, show us around the inside absolutely now coming into the coach we've got the doorbell camera here beautiful work here on the doorway this is definitely diane diane was just an absolute dream to work for she was our upholstery nothing was outsourced we bought our own material and all of this was created was auto catted and then cnc routed and diane put her work on top of wood with the pleating, the stitching, Corian grab handle, um, and again, the accessibility you see right here. If you had to work on the lock system, you didn't have to take the entire door panel off like other manufacturers, just the part you need to access the problem. Yeah, very cool. Let's, mm -hmm. let's cruise inside here. First thing I want to point out is these two-tone captain's chairs with the Parliament Coach logo and then this cool blue accent light little aesthetic piece here. What's going on in the cockpit, sir? We put uh, a couple of these in different coaches. These are uh, Lexan. We run uh, LED lights underneath it uh, at, at the customer's request. The seats were all done here at Parliament by Diane. So this is an Esri Pro driving seat, which did not look like this when it first came in. She kind of made her own pleating. The logo stayed the same as she did a lot of our uniform and shirts. All of this was her design. The bamboo style was picked out by the customer. This is pretty much her creation and what she's done with an Isery driving seat. It's probably one of the nicest driving seats I've, I've seen. It's certainly one of the better, more comfortable. So she is on an air ride with electric assist. This was ordered custom, the steering wheel. Most of you know Prevos this year had the VIP wheel, which of course had your blinks and your accessories for flashing and windshield wiper and all of that, right? here on the VIP wheel. So this one, we deleted the wheel and we put in a custom wheel, black leather wrap with the with the chrome. We've done this on several coaches. They've got the docking for your XM satellite, all your accessibility of chat, to shoulder height, you can get at your, your switches and such. This is a custom dash, same layout, we just had it dipped. All of the details, all of the surroundings was all done here in Florida at Clearwater. Accessibility, again, is everything. It just breaks away, the technician can get at it very, very, very easily. You have a 360 total view camera system for monitoring your backup and your travel uh, behind you when you're towing a motorized vehicle or even a stack or trailer. What we did pride ourselves on is the way we laid this out. We kept all the trapezoid windows clutter free, no cabinets here which gives the driver an incredible view as he's driving down the road. And again, they followed this paint all the way around with these compartments here. All of these were sent out and individually dipped, custom Allison control pad, uh, all the way down to your switches and your, uh, your leveling system. So a lot of work and design went into this. Coming up these stairs, you've got a really nice art cabinet, mm -hmm. little countertop space. Uh, mm -hmm. What's going on up front here? The backing is what we call, and how you're gonna utilize the backing separating the uh, driver from the rest of the motor coach. Some of them had a smaller, narrower, like an astonishing here that went around. We actually tried to utilize everything, hiding a subwoofer inside the base of this, just behind the accent. So this served multiple purposes. We could put equipment in here and just completely encase it. Now this coach, this is hard to believe that this is the same color palettes that were original in 07 uh, with the two-tone cabinet, the saddle color leather. Is this what it, the, the bus was like new? Yeah, it, we pretty much put everything on a wall. Basically we had the design room. It had swatches, bedroom, living room, salon, a galley, and through a bunch of different materials we had the stain, we had the mica that went on this, the Corian mix, and even the accent outline, all the way down to these fixtures here. 
and it was put in our prep room, our design room, and everything was kind of hung, and the whole crew headed then by Mike Costello. He was our plant supervisor and, and foreman, and would come in with the customers and kind of yes, no, move things around. That was the dream room. Bam, we went to work and went ahead and did this and picked it all out. Yeah, it almost has like a marine style feel, and then the lighter floors. Now these floors are in excellent condition, mm -hmm. but I think if someone did remodel them with some really nice light cream color tile floors, it would just take it to another level. Now this is a very interesting floor plan. We've got the sofa up here. Does this turn into sleeping up here? It, it does. That is an electrically controlled jackknife bed, and the controls are right there. All of this was stitched. I watched her put this leather on there, and that is real leather. Beautiful surfaces here, the wood grain around the window, around the valances. So this fabric, our blinds, uh, Miss Diane stitched these together to complete the total scheme. So that falls through all the way. And then again, we have a separation between the two for watching TV and kind of like a theater area. You can put your... Oh, nice. Little cup holders, a little solid surface. Uh, match Corian. This floor plan is totally different than anything we've seen in a Prevo of this era. What's going on with this coat? So the gentleman did a lot of uh, work from the boss. So in this area, he would have completed a lot of his uh, business transactions. We had a phone system here. You can look to the back of the bus. The first thing you're gonna notice is you can't see into the bedroom. So we basically took like a marathon design with that corner refrigerator there. So you would break your long view. You have to walk around, thus separating your restroom area and your bedroom. You can have no view of that from the entertainment section of the coach, which comes in handy for meetings and business meetings meetings that he was going to hold. You're not interrupting um, other family members who might be in the bedroom. Uh, it's all out of use. It's two separate areas, basically, with this design. That is what we call a scan chair. It is made by Scan Design. A lever down there. Now, is this the original chair? Yep, that's the chair we got with it. Yeah, that's a scan design. I could definitely lay back and take a nap here, uh, but definitely a nice, versatile mm -hmm. use because you can very easily swing it back around use this area the, the back of this thing also angles in okay so yeah you can adjust your absolutely nice uh, filing drawer there with your parliament owner's manuals and then now this has to be an updated samsung tv up mm -hmm. here and then yeah. another art cabinet here what's all going on up here so this used to have an nec monitor it was uh here it was a plasma also this will articulate out. There's a couple of things I need to do before I get that worm gear system back online. But this whole area is storage up here. This will fold open and you'll have uh, satellite boxes, Blu-ray players and such behind the TV as well as other storage. Beautiful puck lighting, mm -hmm. very bright lighting. We have all the blinds down in this coach. It's very bright inside here. Now we have a nice little bar stool area. Yeah, with forward facing view. So there was no cabinetry put here. Very nice. So it did not take away from yeah, your, uh, your outside view. Yeah, and a lot of countertop space back here. Now, did Parliament do this floor plan on a lot of coaches? A couple of them. We did another one for a, a nice gentleman called Lily Trucking, and this is almost an identical layout of, of what we did to his. Now, his was an XL2, and it was laid out like this as you run their, their trucking company from the road. Really nice use of this space because it keeps the bus nice and open, and then you're going to have your views on your patio side there. So that's a motorized little uh, bar area there. Very cool. All by the press of a button though. Mm -hmm. It's by your switch here. Oh, okay. So toggled center and then uh, you can go in or out. Yeah, and beautiful craftsmanship, the way this wood grain curves around. We use uh, like scunsy steamers. In the laminate area, we had benders. So we would take wood, we would take material laminate, and we put it in a uh, like a controlled area in vices that would bend it every so often, along with keeping it moist. At the end of the cycle, you end up with a perfectly curved, non-stressed, 
you try to force it, glue it, you've seen what happens, blink, it pops out, it doesn't stay, where if it's pre-molded before it's put on the wood, you're gonna have it stay for, for years to come, which is kind of what we see here. Holding up extremely Absolutely. well. Now, coming over to the galley here. Your uh, washer. That's not a Fisher Paykel, that's a different dishwasher. Yeah, it's made by these guys here, DCS. It sure looks like, a. I mean, it's got the same functionality, same controls as the as the Fisher. This was not in here when we, we turned it okay. loose. I love how they broke up the cabinets with the lighter white color cabinets down low and then that same wood grain up top uh, we've got sink covers here dual sided sink solid surface countertop what else is going on in the galley the larger stove here most of the princesses that you normally see are the twin burner with the two control this is the larger one that actually has three your sink area this one actually includes the garbage disposal oh wow so this side is your your smaller but it's also your food macerating and then your your regular sink this was kind of a new thing yeah and then having that that we've started to see that in the brand new motorhome mm -hmm. so way ahead of the game yep with the drain system so this was this was I don't know where they come up with that, but they uh, they dreamt it. I mean, this is all done out of stamped stainless steel instead of the plastic. So under here, you've got more storage as well as your insincorator, which is your garbage disposal, as well as a Insta-Hot and filtered fresh water. And you can see down in the cabinet, and that's the accessibility I'm talking about there. If you had to get to a wire chase, it's already here, no effort. They just pull apart. They just pull off with Velcro allowing an easy diagnostic and an easy repair yeah. without completely taking your bus apart. And it looks like it's got and the GE yeah. uh, space like maker microwave convection oven there. So and then even back then we were doing this. For accessibility, now for that light, if you had to get to that puck light, you would simply take these hinges off, this lifts up, and now you can get to the wiring. It's very, very easy with no screwdrivers. And what I mean by that is these guys here, okay, there we go. So basically these just push the retainer. Now you can pretty much get at everything. These will lift up. So plug and play with very little tools. Boom, easy peasy. Very cool. I'm noticing some more storage here in the middle of the coach, adjustable shelving. Again, all of those access panels Look that you've been them. pointing out. These are yep. called rip panels. So you basically just pull these and they're everywhere to get at any part of this. It's accessible. You don't have to get a screwdriver in there. You simply grab the tab, pull it open, and anything you need to get to is right behind there. Well, you probably have to remove the shelves first, sure. I would assume, yep. but a lot of accessibility in this coach. It reminds me a little bit of the Royales that mm -hmm. Monaco did just with the simplicity, oh. but if Royal hung in there any more than they did, they would have been another contender because the way they built their machines were just incredible. Parliament had a little more swagger though. Yeah. You, you Florida guys have a little style. But they are spec ordered coaches, so we never know what, what, what a customer is going to come up with. We did a lot of learning in those years too. Yeah. Could it really be done? I love the design. I like the look. I like what you're doing with it. How do we make it work in, in this linear square footage with a rolling chassis? So a lot of learning and a lot of education gone into it. But now that wall panel behind you looks very cool very modern fabric style but you were saying that the owner of the coach did a lot of work in here and really needed to maintain a quiet environment yep. you'll see a lot of this in cubicles office cubicles have a lot of this sound deadening material and you can push on it and actually feel the panel and it also is a blackout there's no windows here it's really really just more for sound deadening to keep this environment quiet during his meetings as well as this design here you almost want to isolate off his working area from the rest of the bus and it's easily done by this design the detail work in this woodwork up here just incredible craftsmanship mm -hmm. on that crown molding there you've got a residential refrigerator with the water and ice dispenser a little more storage here power panel right in here and there's your control for your two inverters and you see a lot of this on uh, high-end motor yachts it uses the same things so you have your tank monitoring system here your voltage throughout your lines. You have your aqua hot functions as well as your solar um, hidden and tucked away right here, out of sight, out of mind. Deep storage. You can fold this over and separate the. There you go. 
and that way you have a separate front and back. This is a traditional parliament design. We do this in the back, we do this around our doorways. You'll see a lot of this custom look on a parliament. Very well lit, bright water closet. Those beautiful wall panels. You have a second bowl sink here in your water closet. Beautiful woodwork throughout the bathroom here. And then just utilizing all the little spaces for storage for your medicine cabinet there. You do have the second sink here, which is more geared towards his wife, and he can continue prepping for the morning with his own private vessel sink and, and prep area here. Lots of full-length mirrors, and then just lots of storage with Corner these cabinets, rounded yeah. edges. So this is where you're gonna put the leaves to your table, your sink, and all of that in here. So storage was a big thing with this build. You know, kind of like Newell prides himself, they utilize every space they can find in a motorhome because storage is so important. So that's kind of why you're seeing the corner cabinets here. This one, I was not involved with doing, but I loved watching our man Tot. They do all of our Corian and all of our builds here. They put them together sectional piece by piece by piece when they built this shower. It was a lot of fun to watch. Beautiful, um, the glass is in mm -hmm. excellent shape. Is this the original glass shower door? It sure looks like it. You even have a little bench seat to, uh, to sit down there. Yeah, or to put your foot up on if you're doing your legs. You have a complement of heaters on the floor. We have electric as well as hydronic cozy heaters throughout the floor. So behind me here used to be Splendies. Now we are looking at some really nice upgraded newer GE stackable washer and dryer units in here which is just really nice. Perfect fit. Yes yeah, so and then more storage here with adjustable shelving. And again you see that parliament design which falls pretty much through the whole coach from the yeah. bathroom door to this to that. Kind of a trademark of, of what we did at parliament. Most of our doorways look like that. Beautiful woodwork here in the bedroom. Uh, marine kind of a feel. So either a queen or a junior king. I think it might be more of a junior king. I think so. The yeah. RV size beds. And keep in mind, uh, our good friends at RVmattress.com do make mattresses of all different sides. And if you use the coupon code Andrew Steele, they will give you a 25% discount. So if you do need to replace the mattress in your motor home, uh, you definitely want to check out RVmattress.com. Uh, but it looks like there's a TV on a televator here. Yeah, with a nice solid surface piece on the top of the televator. Mm -hmm. And again, that one has been changed out to a smart TV. That one again had an NEC monitor in it when it was new. Of course, smart TVs were not a thing uh, that were in style in 07. The upgraded Samsung TV. Yeah, nice fit. Art cabinet here in the wall does have that puck lighting inside of that cabinet. This is a like legit walk-in closet back here. You see you've got the uh, side level of hanging space here, the different shoe cubbies, hanging space along the back. Back. Again, very well lit with that puck lighting. And then there is a door here if we do want to close that off. And then some of your components are housed here. You can see those fans to help keep everything cool. More storage here, more drawer space, very high-end closet. A lot of the features back here we do, the same with a lot of the other motor homes. You can start, you have full control over your generator, start and stop, as well as a gauge to tell what in fact that it's doing. And I was just fumbling around with some of the accent lights while you guys were filming in there just to kind of turn it on. They They've got it outfitted with the 3.5 Calvin lighting, so it's a warm light. They can be changeable. The bed lifts up. Cabinet space is pretty much in each of the corners as you go all the way around. So under the glass display, and of course there, storage, storage, storage was a very, very big one at, at, at uh, Parliament. You know, a lot of our customers and clients were full timers. I think lighting as well was a priority at Parliament. Mm -hmm. Really cool lighting here in the ceiling, around the windows, here in the valances. I mean, mm -hmm. very well lit coach. Yep. Just to try to put it like a back ambience, an accent light. Yeah, a little indirect a true lighting. true accent light yeah. where you're not seeing the bulb, it was well done. The way we ducted it and put our diverters in our air system also, I would like to brag. I haven't seen it duplicated in many other designs the way we did it. And a lot of that was attributed to Rick May. Rick May came up with a central diverter, which they use in Marathon. And he spent many years with Marathon. So we kind of took his idea and blended it into our own. A smooth transition between airs one, two, three, and four. So where I'm going with that is you're not hearing the straining and the struggling of air whistling or weed 
squeezing, trying to get through a, a narrow channel way. It was a very, very smooth diversion through all four airs, which is just awesome. Very well engineered yeah. coach. Jojo, I appreciate you taking the time to show us this coach. I know you have a lot of stuff going on here at the Motor Coach store. This coach is listed for $399,999. A lot of coach for the money. If someone's a serious and qualified buyer, who should they get a hold of? They should call Brad. Brad Twait would be the uh, man in handling the financing, scheduling shows. You can either get him on his uh, cell phone or at his email address. So if you were uh, seriously inquiring with this motorhome, I would personally be happy to walk you through this and take you on a kind of a tour that we did this, this afternoon. Yeah, his information is available at the motorcoachstore.com. Jojo, really appreciate you and the team at the Motor Coach Store. Absolutely. Always an honor and I always learn something from you, so I really appreciate that. Also greatly appreciate all of you out there subscribing to the channel and liking these videos. We hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again. Also, we appreciate the comments. I, I try to answer them as same as Andrew, but we, we first and foremost appreciate you guys subscribing, taking the time out of your day and watching the videos.